If you watched my last video, you would have learned about what the Arduino is and the basics of using it. But in this video we will expand on the range of functionalities an Arduino can offer by using simple electrical components like buttons and potentiometers and learning more statements in the Arduino IDE software. In part 1, I have mentioned the terms digital, analog and pulse width modulation. But what do they really mean? Well, from basic high school physics, we know that electrical signals can have different voltages. In digital signals, the potential difference or voltage can only be 5 volts or 0 volts, which translates to them being on or off, or in binary 1 or 0. By looking at the oscilloscope measurement on the right, we can see a horizontal line up, showing an on state of the signal or the voltage of 5 volts, and a low line representing an off state at 0 volts. From part 1 of the series, we have also learned how to make an LED blink, and here we can see visually how it is done using digital output, as the LED is on when the line is at a high state. We can also use digital inputs instead of digital outputs by using a button and turning it on and off, which I will show later in the video. On the other hand, analog signals can have variable voltage levels within a range. Usually physical quantities have property of being analog, for example like temperature and degree Celsius or light brightness levels. These values are transferred to the Arduino where they are used in a program. But what about analog output? What do we do when we want to control the speed of a motor? Or how bright an LED shines? Well, the last functionality covered in this video is PWM, which in short stands for Pulse Width Modulation. Because the Arduino is not able to output actual analog signals, as it is a digital device, it has to simulate it. Instead of using variable voltages between 0 and 5 volts, pulse width modulation uses pulses of 5 volts at different time delays. By looking at this oscilloscope reading, we can see that the wave has on and off states. The width of each state indicates how much time it takes. This is called the duty cycle of the wave. If the duty cycle is on for 50% of the wavelength, instead of outputting 5 volts, it kind of only supplies 2.5 volts, which can be calculated by using the simple calculation of 5 times 0.5, which equals 2.5. I will show how this is used later in the video. If we look at the Arduino Uno, we can see that it has many types of headers. The ones we used before are the 13 digital I.O. pins on the right, but also on the left, we have 6 analog input pins. Some of the digital pins have a tilde symbol, which are the pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11, meaning that they support pulse width modulation. If we want to use these analog and digital pins, we will learn how to use a button with the Arduino, and how to use a potentiometer to produce a pulse width modulation signal. The first circuit we will build is for digital input and we will need a half size breadboard, jumper cables, a push button, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a red LED with a 220 ohm resistor and an Arduino Uno with a USB cable. Start by placing the button in the middle of the breadboard so that each side is on separate traces. Then connect one of the corner sides of the button to digital pin 2. On the other side of the button, connect one of its pins with a wire to the Arduino's 5 hold header. Next to that, connect the other button pin with the 10 kilo ohm resistor to the Arduino's ground header using another wire. Like from the last video, connect the LED with a 220 ohm resistor to the pin 6. Now we can program the Arduino. Start off with selecting the correct board and port from the tool section. We will use the same blink code as last time, changing it slightly. 
In the setup, add the pin 2 using pin mode brackets 2 comma input to set it as an input. In the void loop around the blink code, add the start at the true statement if brackets digital read 2 equals high curly bracket and at the end another curly bracket. Below this if statement, add else curly bracket digital right brackets 6 comma low and another curly bracket at the end. This statement checks if the button is pressed by checking that the pin 2 is connected to 5 volts. If yes, then the LED will blink, which can be seen here after their code is uploaded to the board. Otherwise, the LED is off. The other circuit I want to show is using analog inputs and positive modulation on an LED. We will need, again, a half-size breadboard, jumper cables, a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, a red LED with a 220 ohm resistor, and an Arduino Uno with a USB cable. A potentiometer is basically a variable resistor that can output an analog value when the head is turned in one direction or the other. We can measure these values with the Arduino by connecting the center potentiometer pin to the analog pin 0 using a cable and then connecting the opposite pot pins to 5 volts and ground using wire separately. Then, to control the LED brightness using pulse width modulation, we connect the anode using a jumper to the pin 9 of the Arduino, which supports pulse width modulation, and the cathode using a 220 ohm resistor to ground with a jumper cable. In the IDE, we start off again by selecting the board and port, but instead of writing another program, we can use one from the sketch folders in the Arduino IDE. Simply click File, Examples, and under Analog, we have the pre-written sketch called Analog In Out Serial by Tom Igo. The first part of the code sets up our variables, or values that are used to replace the numbers in the code precisely the Arduino analog and digital pins, and to store values from the potentiometer. Then, in the void setup, we can see that we have the statement serial.begin brackets 9600, which means that the Arduino will send serial data it collects back to the computer, where they are shown on the screen in the serial monitor, which is useful with sensors that you want to log on your computer. With the command sensor value equals analog read brackets analog in pin, we read the analog value on the analog pin 0 and assign that value to the variable sensor value. Then we have to convert the analog input reading to a value that pulse wave modulation accepts with output value equals map brackets sensor value comma 0 comma 1023 comma 0 comma 255 which maps the values accordingly. Last we just use positive modulation or analog output to shine the LED pin with the analog input reading by using analog write brackets analog out pin comma output value. In the last part, the value measured is sent to the PC by using these statements. After uploading the code, if we turn the knob on the potentiometer, we can see that the LED shines dimmer or brighter proportionally to the potentiometer's position. We can also see the readouts on the serial monitor after clicking its icon on the IDE. When the duty cycle of the wave is zero on the output, the LED is off, meaning that the on state width is almost none. As the output value increases, the pulse width also increases making it shine brighter. In the next video, we will be learning about how to use and program the ADtiny85, but if you have any questions or concerns, write them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. 
If you want to see more videos, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for the next video. Until then, I will see you in the next video.